Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today I'm going to talk about system modeling in software engineer. And I'm going to answer two questions. What is a uh, system modeling? And why we need the system modeling? We actually define a system as a generic concept for designating a software application, software platform, or any other software artifact. And then a model is an abstraction of a system often used to replace the system under study. A model in software engineer and the information system fields is usually language-based in nature and they tend to describe or prescribe some system. So this is a, a little bit different from the mathematics science where a model is usually uh, in theoretical uh, nature. Okay, models make the project planning more effectively and efficiently while providing a more appropriate view of the system. So this is the basic reason why we need the system model. So models allow the project control to be achieved according to objective criteria. System modeling helps the analyst to understand the functionality of the system and the models are used to communicate with customers with ease. So in summary, models help us to visualize a system. Models allow us to specify the structure and the behavior of a system. Models give a template that help guide the development process. And the models help to document the decision taken along the project life cycle. From a system perspective point of view, model uh, can be classified into context models, interaction models, structure models, and behavior models. And in an external perspective, where you model the context or environment of the system by context models. And interaction perspective, you model the interactions between a system and its environment or between the components of system by interaction models. In structure models, we model the organization of a system or the structure of the data that is processed by the system. And finally, in behavior models, we model the dynamic behavior of the system and how the system responds to events. And then look at it from the uh, UML diagram tabs. We have the following diagram tabs. We have activity diagrams. We have use case diagrams. We have sequence diagrams. We have class diagrams. And finally, we have state diagrams. Activity diagrams, in this sense, is the, uh, shows the activities involved in a process or in a data processing. Use case diagrams show us the uh, interactions between a system and his environment. Sequence diagram shows the interaction between actors and the system and between system components. Class diagrams show the objective classes in the system and the association between these classes. And finally, state diagram shows us how the system reacts, reacts to internal and all external events. I'm going to show you two examples of the state diagrams. And then modeling language, because we are defined the system modeling as the process of developing abstract, abstract models of a system, which model presenting a different view or perspective of the, the system. And then uh, system modeling has now come to mean representing a system using some kind of graphical notations, which is now almost always based on notations in the unified modeling language, that is the so-called UML. And the modeling language is actually uh, is essentially an, a set of all possible models that are comfort, conformant with the modeling language's abstract syntax 
represented by one or more concrete syntaxes that satisfy a given semantics, and one important component is the pragmatics in system modeling in the modeling language um, that help us and guide us how to use it in the most and, and the proper way. Okay, and this actually this is a diagram show you all the uh, source of diagrams uh, in a hierarchical way we used in unified modeling language. And uh, uh, at the bottom line, at the bottom level, we have communication diagram, interaction overview diagram, sequence diagram, timing diagram, and the go to up, up, we have the behavior diagram and structure diagram. So this, uh, actually the diagrams can be classified broadly into large class, two large classes. Classes. One is behavior diagram, and the other one is structure diagram. Okay, and then uh, besides the UML language, we have some other languages, which are uh, BPMN, which is a business process modeling notations. So this is a business mainly used in business process, and we also have XIS, XIS mobile uh, language that is mainly used in mobile applications for specific purpose. And we also have DSL3S, DSL for Special Simulation Scenarios, which is mainly used for specific simulations of these languages. And then I'm going to show you two examples of the structure uh, uh, diagram uh, which we use uh, a finite state machine to model a 10 star and a, a, the uh, internet congestion control. And in 10 star, everybody uh, uh, is familiar with this uh, 10 star. And in 10 star, we have two states. One is locked and the other one is unlocked. We have two possible inputs. If you put a coin in the slot, and then pushing the arm, the other one is the push. And then the, the one is a coin, putting a coin. And we have the reaction rules. In the lock star, you push it on the arm, it stays in the lock state. Giving the machine a coin input, and then the machine will shift the state from the locked to unlocked. And give addition coin inputs doesn't change the state, and give a push input, we are shift the stat back to locked, okay? And then we can uh, draw this table and this uh, uh, diagrams uh, to uh, reflect the working mechanism of the 10 star. We have the stat transition table, which uh, uh, give you the uh, interactions and the, the, the relationship between current state and the next state and the input and the output. And we also have this that stat diagram of 10, 10 star. As you can see, uh, all this uh, state can be uh, transit among, uh, between the two states. We have two locked start states and locked states, and they can transit from each other under certain conditions. Okay, and later on, uh, we look at the TCP congestion control uh, model is more complex. We also can use finished state machine to uh, model this system. Uh, in the uh, in in the internet, if we uh, focus on a, a, a send a receiver pay in at the receiver side, uh, we have three states. Uh, we have slow start. We have congestion avoidance, and uh, uh, we have the fast recovery. And there are a number of uh, uh, reactions, and uh, all these reactions uh, is a uh, uh, response to uh, the uh, ASIC knowledge, acknowledge from the receiver. If we uh, uh, receive some uh, ASIC package, and there are some information, and all this uh, information, all this uh, will determine your, how can you respond to the ACK. And you have three uh, states to transition uh, from each other, uh, all in this uh, states it itself. And uh, then we can show these diagrams to uh, reflect this uh, 
uh, very complex working mechanism of TCP congestion control. And, and that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, I can always be uh, reachable by this email address. Thank you very much. Have a good day.